In this video, we're going to take a look at the blocking scene here within Unity. Now, I have the scene open, and as you can see, it's extremely simple. I'm just using some basic Unity primitives to design an overall layout of the level that I'm about to build. Now, I use this scene specifically to establish my scene scale and texel density. Now, this is just a demo project, but when you're actually building a game level, it's extremely important to make sure that your scale is correct, as well as establishing a correct texel density that's going to work best for your level and help you to optimize the texture usage. So here in my scene, uh, we have basically this ground plane, which is made up of several just 3D planes. Here in the background, you see that I just have these 3D cubes cubes that are green. These represent the large scale rocks or cliffs. The red cubes are going to represent the medium level rocks. Here I have my character, so I'll just select the character and hit F to focus. Here I have a character, and then here this orange block is going to represent a vehicle that I'm going to have in the background. And so here in this scene, we're going to establish our texel density as well as our overall scene scale. So let's start by just taking a look at the ground plane here. So I'm just going to zoom out. I'm going to focus here one of these planes, and I'll hit F to focus this. Let's come up here to our hierarchy, and uh, let's just disable all of the other groups of objects that we don't really want to focus on just yet. So here I'm just going to disable uh, the vehicle, the cliff rocks, as well as the soldier here. And like I said, we're going to first just take a look at this ground plane. So like I said, I'm using these basic 3D cubes here. So game object, 3D object, and in my case for this guy here, I'm just using a plane. And I have several of these planes that are snapped together here to create the overall ground that I'm gonna use in my scene. Now, one reason that I'm separating this ground plane into smaller planes instead of just using one large piece of geometry is that I'm able to create a modular ground plane by keeping this here as tileable parts. But even more importantly is that I'm able to utilize occlusion culling here within Unity. So for instance, if we take a look at our camera here, and notice I'm just looking at my camera view. Now if I used a single mesh for the entire ground plane, I couldn't use occlusion culling to reduce the vertex count. Here, the camera is only seeing a portion of this ground at the current angle. However, if this were a single mesh, all of the vertices, even the ones not visible to the camera at this frame, are sent to the GPU because we are still rendering a single object. Since I broke up the ground into sections, I can now use occlusion culling with the basic frustum culling to reduce the amount of ground rendered by the camera. So now, let's actually start to talk about our scene scale. So here I have the grid enabled, and you'll notice here that as I zoom in, the grid is actually subdivided into smaller sections. And if I look at just one of these squares, this is going to represent one unit or one game unit. And within Unity, one unit is equal to one meter. Now, when it comes to game units, you can set this to equal anything that you need it to for your specific level. So for instance, you could say that, well, in my case, one unit is going to equal two meters or a uh, half a meter or whatever. It just depends on what you decide for your game. In my case, I'm just going to stick with the one unit is equal to one meter. Now that's important when you think about the usage of physics in your game. So your overall scale is going to affect how physics calculations are going to work. And of course, that can always be changed with settings, but it's just something to be aware of. So like I said, we're going to just use the ratio of one unit is equal to one meter. And so here, I could come over and take a look at how many units this plane is occupying. So if I wanted to, I could come in and I could start to just count each one of these units. However, I have this tool that I created a few years ago and I call it the Distance Tool. It's actually available on the Unity Asset Store. However, the version that you see here has been updated for this project. So you can get the updated tool here with the project files. And I'll also update the Asset Store as well. But for now, you can see that I have my Distance Tool and I have two transforms that are basically locked to the edges of this plane. So here if I go back to the distance tool, you can see that this plane is taking up 20 units. This plane is actually uniform, so what we're looking at here is 20 units on the X and 20 units on the Z here. So that means that I could look at one of these sections as 20 meters by 20 meters. Now when I'm establishing this scale for my scene, it's important to have this relative to some type of hero asset. So in my case, I have my soldier, which 
as a humanoid character gives us a really good idea about scene scale. So let me just enable the soldier, and uh, the soldier is actually placed over here. So let's just grab uh, the soldier, just drag uh, the object over here into this section that we're kind of focusing on. And so the thing I'm going to do next is let's come over to my distance tool, and I actually have a new uh, tool here. So let me just show you how this works. Let me uh, come over here and just remove this component. If I have the distance tool selected, I can come over to Game Object, the 3D Ninja, Create Distance Tool, and it's going to create a new distance tool I can work with. So here I have my handles. Let me just drag these handles over here, these transforms, and let me just snap these here to uh, the actual soldier here. So I'm going to hold down V. This uh, enables Unity's vertex snapping. And I'll just snap one of the handles here to the feet, hold down V, and snap the other here to the head. So let me just focus in on this and make sure I've got it close. Uh, here I'm going to hold down Shift and click this X axis. This is going to drop me into an orthographic view. So here, I'll hold down V again and just snap this here to uh, the top vertice of the head. Now, if we take a look at the overall units here, we can see that this is giving me two units. So here, I'll just click this middle cube here to drop back into my perspective view. And you can see that this helps me to establish the overall scale here for this ground plane. And so like I said, each one of these sections here is going to equal 20 units. So now that I kind of have the ground plane set, so I have my character, which was my starting point. Then I went to establish the overall ground area that I wanted to cover for this demo project. And I established that each one of these sections is going to be a 20 by 20 unit plane. So now that I have this in place, we can start to look at how our material is going to be affected by the scale. So here in my project, I have my substance that I've imported. Now, I've covered this in chapter one. Uh, it's really simple to import a substance. Just right click import new asset, and then choose the SBS AR file. So now that I have the substance, let's just take the material that was generated, left click, drag and drop, and place that here onto this section that we're working on. And I'll zoom in, and you'll notice that the scale of this material is way off. So it doesn't match you know, what we have here for our reference character. And so we can easily fix this by just adjusting our tiling parameters. So here for tiling, I'm going to come in and just give this a 4x4 four four tile. And so now you can see that the overall scale is now starting to match the scene that we have in place. So our texture is looking correct in reference to the height of our character. And on a second thought, I think I might actually change this to a 5x5 five five tile. So now I want to take a basic look at how I established the texel density here for this scene. Now, texel density is going to be very specific to each project you work on, and there's definitely not a magic number that you can use. There's a lot of factors that come into play, and typically texel density is something that's decided on by the art director. So like I said, here I'm just going to showcase what I did for this project. So here, if we take a look at the distance tool, uh, I have a setting here. So use resolution is disabled. That means that I'm not going to look at this texture resolution, but instead I'm going to utilize this pixels per unit setting, which in my case I've decided to use 128 pixels per unit. So what this means is that for each unit, I need to allocate 128 pixels from the texture. So if we take a look at my measurement that we see here, so this is 20 units, this means that I need a texture of 2,560 pixels to cover this section. So now if we go back to our rock ground, and here I'm just going to scroll down to where we actually have the target width and height resolution settings for the substance. Notice here that I have 512 and we are tiling this five times on the X and Y. So if we take 512 and multiply it by the five tiles, we actually get the value of 2560. This means that since this texture is now tileable, I can optimize a lower resolution at 512 by 512 and tile it to cover the amount of pixels that I need for this area. This means that I can lower my overall texture memory. And like I said, there are many factors when it comes to texel density, and the budget for the texture memory plays a huge role in that. Now, another thing to consider with this is how close the camera is actually going to get to the texture. So maybe from this angle here, this is going to work for me. But if the camera is going to end up getting pretty close to this actual surface, then I'm going to need to increase that pixels per unit. So in this case, when I set up the final shot with the camera, I may actually need to increase my target width and height so that I get a higher texel density. For example, 
I may need to increase my pixels per unit to 256. So here at a value of 256, I can now see that for this 20 units, I need a texture of 5,120. Well, if I come back over here to my substance and I increase my texture resolution to let's say a 1024 by 1024 image, so 1024 times the five tiles is going to give me 5,120. So what I'm actually doing by paying careful attention to this texel density is I'm able to choose a maximum target width and height here for my resolution so that I'm getting an optimal quality yet still being very mindful of the overall texture memory budget that I want to have for my project. And so here we see the entire blocking scene and I've just taken some measurements of some key assets here and I'm going to utilize these measurements in my 3D program. So like I said, we already have set up the settings here or our scale ratio for our ground. And with this ground, you can see that I have these sections here and it's going to end up being five sections by five sections to create my overall ground plane. And so with this, I've gone ahead and measured one of the largest assets here, which is this large rock. So if I go back to my distance tool, we can see that I'm going to end up creating a rock asset that's going to be 90 units tall. Here is a mid-range rock, this red block here, and you can see that's about 30 units tall. And then finally here, I've taken a rough measurement of the stand-in object here that represents my vehicle, which is going to give me a length of about 22 units. So again, I'm taking these key measurements here, and I'm going to utilize these when I start to actually build the assets in my 3D program. So building a blocking scene is always a great way to start when you're creating your project and your level because just utilizing these primitives, you can easily just scale, rotate, and position them just to get an overall idea and visually kind of think through the process of what you want to create. Once you kind of have this in place, you can use a tool like I'm using here, the distance tool, to kind of measure these key assets so that you get an idea of the type of scale you're going to be working with when you actually begin to create these assets.